Dr. Seti, thanks for um, spending some time with me today about talking about Mo Norman. My what, pleasure. One of the reasons that um, I was very interested in getting to talk to you was that you probably have more knowledge about Mo. I, I mean, of all the professional teachers and professionals I've known, you've probably known more Mo longer than anybody out there. Mm -hmm. And um, and you're also one of the most well-known golf instructors around. And I wanted to uh, just have you tell me a little bit more about your career and about yourself. Um, feel free to talk about yourself because I want to know a little bit more about your background and, and so does the audience too. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, I, I started teaching a long time ago, Todd, 42 years ago. And uh, I, um, of course, uh, I, I guess I try to apply teaching to um, the use of uh, uh, biomechanics. I got my degree, uh, my doctorate degree in biomechanics, and we did a kind of a modeling technique uh, <clears throat> uh, years ago at the University of Kentucky where we took 50 players on a tour and did the average of their swing in 10 positions. I don't want to go into all that, but it was quite a unique study, a, a biomechanical analysis of the golf swing. And uh, I've always been interested in the golf swing, and um, I started teaching, oh gosh, uh, just at a local range uh, here in Chicago area, and uh, work, continued to work, and, and sooner or later I, uh, I, I uh, <clears throat> kind of worked in a place called Pine Needles down in Pinehurst, North Carolina. And uh, that's actually where I met Mo. He was, um, Mo was, uh, used to come down every, um, every year for about 10 years and of course it was quite an enjoyable time to watch him hit a golf ball and um, <clears throat> so my background in teaching has been you know kind of working from a range to a resort and uh, to a country club I worked at Medina Country Club for a while and um, worked at uh, several other clubs uh, and have been teaching ever since uh, some schools and I also uh, did uh, a lot of private lessons, of course, and I still do. Uh, but I've always been interested in the golf swing, and particularly Mo Norman's swing always was quite of interest to me. And um, we used uh, a lot of video when I was just coming into uh, golf. It was, video wasn't really popular at that time, 1975. There wasn't much video going on, and and computer graphics and modeling, you know, basically and. Uh, I kind of brought that technology in, I think, to, uh, to golf instruction. And um, uh, at, in the year 2000, I was fortunate. I was elected uh, PGA T National Teacher of the Year, and I received like uh, a three um, uh, Illinois Section Teachers of the Year. And um, I've spoke at virtually every, every section, PGA section in the country. Uh, you know, talking about how to teach the full swing to the average player, how to teach the uh, the real good player. Uh, so um, well versed on a lot of different topics, but it's been uh, a fun ride, you might say. One of the things that, that interests me a lot about you know your history and your background is the biomechanical side. I think right. I think that's something that's and, and, you, and you know, use of video and, and modeling and all that stuff as far as the learning process goes. To me that's such an important part of, of teaching people and learning but you know you, you probably broke a lot of ground in that in that regard because um, it, even today very few instructors use use video and and the modeling process and then when it comes to Mo Norman when when you, you must have seen some biomechanical stuff in Mo that was unique to say oh, the yeah. least but at the time when you first met him what was the first year you actually met Mo Norman? Oh gosh He's, I think it was 19... I think 82, 82 was the first time he came down to Pine Needles and of course Mo was uh, kind of a ultimate showman, you know, and uh, he would uh, talk about um, Hogan, he'd talk about the great ball strikers and uh, rightfully so, I think he included himself in on that list. Uh, Trevino, he ca called one of the best ball strikers, George Knudsen. Um, and so, you know, I, when he hit a golf ball, uh, Todd, it was different sound. So I said, I better watch this, mm -hmm. you know, because the sound was uh, really, uh, really different. And he would call it, you know, I don't know how he would say it, but quote unquote, the sound of greatness. Mm -hmm. 
but if you have to know Mo, that know that he really wasn't bragging. He was telling you the truth. Yeah. You know, he really could strike a golf ball. Yeah. What do you think that sound was from? I mean, I, of course, you and I would say pure mechanics, you know, the pure angles of approach of the club. But, right. But, you know, I guess you had to be there because I tell people that all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you missed out not getting to see this guy hit golf balls. Oh, yeah. Not yeah. A, it's just amazing. Uh, you know, a, a video is great and it's going to show you something, but Mo wasn't trying to create a perfect swing. He was trying to create a perfect impact. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would practice moves and his, his body was such that what he did, he felt, you know, and, and the feeling that he made, made his moves, well, I don't know if they're different, but he copied, took a little out of Hogan, took a little out of Nelson. He took the things that work for him and, uh, and just hit so many golf balls that uh, it just, uh, it came together for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think, you, you asked me this question a minute ago, and, I, and, uh, and we'll look at some video here, but you, you said, um, why don't more people do this on the tour? And you've worked with tour players before, yeah. plenty of tour players. And I know you, 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 there's a lot of guys you know that, that I don't know, but like Paul Azinger, what do these guys say about Mo Norman? And I, I, I've not talked to many of these players about him, but what, what do they say about Mo? Well, Zinger, uh, I was on my golf teams years ago when I was at Brevard Community College. And, and so uh, <clears throat> Mo can't, used to come down to uh, uh, Titusville quite a bit and uh, he did clinics for us. And that's where Paul met him, of course. And uh, Paul. <laughs> Paul watched him and uh, he watched his leg action. He says, I learned my leg action from Mo Norman. And so uh, uh, why they don't use this method, I think they put parts of it in there. But I do think that uh, we still are in the infancy of instruction. I don't think that, uh, uh, I think we do what looks good and not necessarily what's efficient. And um, Mo did what he felt and what's efficient. If he would have uh, gr grown up with a video camera right next to him and say this is right this is wrong maybe he wouldn't have that uh, uh, setup that he had right. but he think uh, I think that that setup so, worked for him because of his body yeah sometimes I'm glad and, and I know there was some because I did some background on how Mo one of my questions with Mo was, how did you learn that uh, but and I did some research and never really found a lesson that Mo formally took. Now there was a, he had some influential pros up there that, that gave him places to practice and would say things to him like, you can, pra you can practice here every day as long as you practice every day, you know, things like that. But not any instruction, formal instruction. And I'm a, sometimes I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that nobody got a hold of him and really taught him. I mean, I think he needed to be managed as right. a professional golfer. I think that was maybe something that we wish would have happened with Mo, but I'm glad no one got a hold of his instruction and said, you need to hold it like this and grip it like this because we would have never had a Mo Norman. Yeah, I think that Mo uh, was uh, kind of the ultimate of individualism and um, his own personal style uh, worked very well, just like an Arnold Palmer's personal style worked, worked well for him. Um, but his personal style happened to be very mechanically correct. And uh, I mean, from a mechanical standpoint, you can't probably find a, a swing that's probably more mechanically efficient than what he did. It was kind of scary to watch him hit one straight shot after a straight shot. Which makes me still wonder why more people don't do this. Yeah, I, I, I really uh, don't understand. I, I don't think that they understand, Todd, uh, his motion as well as maybe you do. Um, but um, I think if they understood it and they understood the mechanics of it, I think it would be taught more. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a look at some video here, and then I want to talk to you about sure. what we saw. This is the video you shot back in 1992. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So, and you and you're doing some interviewing with Mo. So, let's take a look at this, and then we'll Great. talk about it. Super. So you're really more upper body player than lower body player. Is that oh, right? Yeah. Uh huh. All my life. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. He's an upper body player, and that's where his strengths right were. On the ground and just dry, dry, buckle the left knee, huh? Oh yeah, as much as I can. What? How do you how do you start that motion with the left knee? What what do you as do? I'm going back. I read my left knee, setting the angle of my downswing as I'm going back. I see. My left knee is going towards the target already. Before you even get back, right? Yeah. Here. Yeah, that's it. You're right. 
You remember when I coached the kids down at Brevard? Yeah. And you did that clinic for us? Yeah. yeah. And Paul Azinger used to watch you. I filmed your swing, and he, he said he learned his leg action from you. Yeah. That's what he told me. Yeah, he was just a kid then. Yeah. yeah. Players today, you think they're trying to be more lower body than upper body? Uh, no, actually. They're more upper body rotational, and their the legs are more stabilizers like he's doing. Right. But uh, some of them have too much leg action, and they get they get problems getting that club behind them. I think the Nicholas era though showed more of a lower body uh, motion. It's kind of changed to using legs as stabilizers now instead of uh, initiators of the movement. What do you think of that swing, Mo? Nicely hit. He's my protege here. One of my theories is about about Mo is you know you, like you see his straight legs at a dress and his arms straight out, and you know if, if you hit a many golf balls as Mo, you're going to try to become the most efficient, less moving parts, most efficient. Well, I used to say, Mo, you put yourself in a position where you make you can make the least amount of mistakes. Because if I say to you, straight legs, if you straighten them all the way, there's no you can't have them bent at all. So there's right. no you no mistakes to be made. So I always told Mo, you always put yourself in in the least amount of error. At yeah, your less motion the better. He used to say that a lot to me. He says uh, the least amount of motion with the uh, fastest speed at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Least amount of motion. Mm -hmm.